do you know you can compress your satellite imagery to 100 times smaller size by just using GDAL utility. If you don't know how to do that, please watch this video till the end. So in this video, I'm going to guide you how to resize your imagery without losing the visual quality. All right, so first of all, let me show you how it looks like. So this is my input imagery and this is my compressed file, right? And overall in visual quality, both images are same, exactly same. But uh, yeah, I did some compression technique, uh, which I'm going to show you in uh, further steps. So yeah, so in this way, it looks almost similar to the input imagery, our compressed one, and uh, but the size is very small, uh, around 100, uh, 100 times smaller than the input imagery. All right, so when we check the size, so basically here, uh, the input imagery size is 83 MB and the output imagery size is only 50 uh, around 500 kb right so yeah let's get start with the comparison so first thing first so in order to do this process i download this data set under my name so don't worry about the data i'll provide the link in the video description so simply you can download this data and uh, unzip it if necessary so for me, uh, my data set is already here, um, input imagery. I rename it to the input imagery and I remove the output imagery. So this is my data, right? Another essential step is to install the GDAL. So for that, if you haven't installed GDAL CLI, just search for easiest way to install GDAL CLI and my video will pop up uh, from geodev channel so in this three minute short tutorial you will know how to install the gdal cli and after that uh, you are ready to go all right so those are the basic things uh, before like starting the actual tutorial so after that uh, you just need to go to os geo 4w cell and uh, i'll zoom in here and then here you need to uh, provide the location to your uh, to your file right so first of all i'll change my directory to my uh, geotiff compression file and here if you are a little bit familiar with uh, the gdal then you can type gdal info command uh, over your input imagery to get the basic overview of your imagery right so i uh, maybe i'll put it large and here uh, it says that uh, the size is uh, 3246 by 2147 and another basic important thing is coordinate system is wgs 1984 and other other important things to note down is the compression technique so here uh, by default this imagery is the sentinel 2 4 band imagery rgb and nir band and uh, it has lzw compre uh, compression right and the other uh, important thing is uh, it's the fluid 32 byte um, data type and it has as i said before it has four bands uh 234 which is rgb i believe uh r g and b and then nir uh, so these are the band and uh, we are going to compress it uh, to make it a smaller size all right so the first thing we are going to try is just uh, change the compression technique so maybe uh, we'll this time first of all i'll write the compression technique to d flat and uh, my input imagery name and then the output output image uh, output name right d f l a t e dot t this is my output and it might take some time depending on your image size so my image is not that big 
that's why uh, the processing was quite faster and it's done right so if i check my data folder so you will get the output imagery as well uh, and here the input size is 83.5 yamb but the output size is 57.6 mb so we already compress a small chunk of our imagery right um, by the way this deflect is the loose less compression so basically if your data set uh, is uh, more important and then uh, you are more uh, curiously like uh, taking care of your uh, pixel values then uh, do the deep flat compression so it will help you to uh, resize your data but uh, a, the another very good compression technique is jpeg compression jpeg compression and basically it's very safe choice for visual imagery uh, yeah, but if you are really worried about your actual pixel values of uh, for example, like uh, for the DEM data set, you need to measure, uh, you need to get the exact uh, information about that pixel value, right? Uh, so for those data set, it might not be helpful, but for the visual data set, you can simply apply JPEG uh, compression technique. But uh, one of the small problem with JPEG compression is that uh, it can be uh, applied only in the integer uh, byte data type, right? Not in the fluid 32 data type. That's why we are going to uh, we are going to convert our data type to the byte or the 8 bit integer. So for that, you can write GDAR translate and OT it should be byte and then scale uh, and then here I'm going to provide the input imagery name and then output byte and dot tiff right sorry uh, it should be tiff and it's a little bit faster than previous operation because we are simply changing the data type, right? And if the data type is byte, you can actually see the thumbnail like this, right? And now our image is already compressed to 26.5 MB. And if we try to load our output byte imagery, actually it should be also similar to the our input imagery. But don't worry about this color. Basically, it's only about like visualization property in the symbology tab. So contrast, no enhancement. Basically, using some enhancement technique, uh, you can actually enhance the imagery. But actually, uh, the imagery all the features look similar to the original imagery so it's the exact same right just we are changing the byte data type and of course we are we might remove some of the like various colors i mean the variation in color because we are changing the data type right and let me clear this out and now we will be able to apply the JPEG compression using GDAL translate. And then uh, our first option will be compress equal to JPEG. And then uh, another option I want to add is tile equal to yes. So basically we will also tile the imagery internally while we are at it and internal tile allow rendering to quickly pick out and decom decompress just a small portion of image which is important once you have applied a more computational expensive uh, compression algorithm like JPEG. So now I can uh, provide the input imagery as, as output byte since uh, the JPEG compression only take byte imagery and then the output imagery name. So basically we will write output and then JPEG. And if you hit enter, now your image size should be a little bit smaller than the first one. So now it's significantly compressed. It's a 3.58 MB. And if we compare the visual quality, so it's almost same, right? 
and just you might have noticed only in at this area it's a little bit different uh, so it's the small change but for the visualization perspective i think it should be fine so basically yeah we are just applying this compression technique jpeg compression technique uh, to decrease our size right and the uh, the interesting thing is we can still do better for some reason that we will pass uh, the jpeg algorithm with the uh, ycbcr color space so using that color space it will be uh, the size will be decreased more so basically we'll write gdal translate and then co basically we'll write the same thing as above but here we are going to add another option uh, photometric equal to ycbcr so basically we are applying this color space Oh, output jpeg output jpeg not supported for band only oh i see yeah, yeah yeah so the thing is our as i said before our imagery is the uh four band imagery rgb and nir band but if you are only interested about visualization then uh, you can remove the fourth band and only apply this ycbcr color space to your uh to your uh, uh, input imagery right so in order to do that so basically you need to add the ender command uh, so here i'm going to add band one band two and band three which are the rgb color space for me and then also i forgot to change the name so basically i'll change it to the ycbcr and then if i hit run then it run instantly and now mm, our output jpeg is uh sorry looks like our output jpeg is cropped uh since we failed here so maybe i'm going to run it again uh, okay this one and now i'm going to compare this file size so basically we start from 83 mb and we change the byte size uh, to uh, decrease our image to 26 MB and now with the JPEG compression it's 3 MB and with uh, like YCBCR color space and removing the fourth band our imagery is much more smaller just 800 MB right and which is really great so yeah now maybe it's time to check our uh, latest imagery so its size is smaller but when we try to visualize it uh, so basically it's similar to the previous one but you might have seen this small like color pop up but yeah depending on oh, how much uh, accuracy you want how good uh, image you want or uh, depending on your file size so you can simply do that um, in the overall little bit larger scale so the imagery will look same as it is uh, same to the uh, original imagery for us original might be the output byte and it's almost same right and i'm seeing some of the color popped up somewhere here so yeah this is the little bit problem with the uh, ycbcr color space but yeah but overall in the larger scale so if we toggle on and off the output imagery it looks exactly the same all right so uh, again if you want to decrease the size more uh, decrease the image size more then you should also like do the um, add the ender option with co and then uh, ender option will be the jpeg quality and then you can decrease the quality to the 50 percentile and then if you uh, maybe i'll also change the output name so that we can compare and see the image so basically we are decreasing the quality by the 50th time and if you check the size of latest imagery with 50 
quality uh, it's around 500 mb right and if you try to visualize it so you can see no different there, there is no different to the input imagery and actually uh, if we compare with the input one so it is a little bit brighter since it's fluid 32 bit and um, it has some image comp image like visualization technique stress to min max so basically that's why it looks brighter but overall the image is exactly the same right so yeah and when you check with the rgb color space with the uh, byte uh, byte like uh, input then uh, it's the exactly same right and but if you zoom in into the particular some of the location you might see the different but overall uh, it's the exactly similar uh, visualization S same image right all right, so that's all about uh, image compression using GDAL utility, but for high speed server at more zoomed out scale, we need to add the overview of the image and then we'll uh, make sure the overview use the same uh, high compression option as the base data. So in order to do that, so basically you can write GDAL ADO uh, edos and then uh, you can pass the configuration so configuration will be config compress overview will be jpeg uh, and then jpeg quality overview will be 50 percent and then J photometric overview will be ycbcr color space and config will be the interval uh, overview will be pixel and then r will be average and basically uh, it will create the set of like overview image uh, with 2, 4, 8 and 16 zoom level. So if you hit enter, so it should be done quickly. But for me, uh, since the image is already is very small and then area is not that bigger, that's why um, it did not uh, create like uh, the, the zoom level. But for the uh, bigger data set, you might need to create this um, overview image. By the way, I haven't mentioned about the cloud optimized GeoTIFF, which is a new kid in a town. And um, actually, this is also great file format for storing your data set in cloud uh, storage or uh, transferring your data set across the server or like downloading or visualizing uh, your data set. So in order to like generate the cloud optimized GeoTIFF, you simply need to add the OEF and then COG option, which means cloud optimized GeoTIFF. And for uh, that, uh, for that like cloud optimized GeoTIFF operation, we are going to use the uh, output byte imagery. And then uh, our setting, rest of the setting will be similar to whatever we write before. So compression JPEG and then quality is 50% decrease right and if you hit run so basically it will create the cloud optimized geotiff within few seconds and this is your cloud optimized geotiff which is very powerful uh, in the server so basically if you want to compare your image with the uh, output byte so basically it's the same image but it's very good file format for the uh, actually file format is the tiff but the configuration is uh, like uh, internal configuration is cloud optimized geotiff right so it will be very helpful uh, for like in, in inside cloud so if you want to know more about cloud optimized geotiff uh here is the other video for you i hope you enjoyed this video hit the like button and go back and check my cloud optimized geotiff